feedback about our city's future from our community is really important. It helps us prioritise your needs when planning projects, services and other initiatives. A convenient way to have your say and stay in the loop on any upcoming consultations is by registering your details on our Engagement Hub website at playford.engagementhub.com.au. We look forward to hearing from you. The new My Playford mobile app is here. You can now stay up to date with the latest council news and info, set bin reminders, make online payments and send through your customer requests, all in one place and at the touch of a button. Download the free My Playford app today for your iPhone or Android device. Is it time to do a big clean up around the house? We can help get rid of your unwanted items with a hard waste collection. You can book Norma to pick it up from your front yard, up to two times per financial year. Or you can choose a voucher and take it to Norma yourself. They'll even lend you a trailer for free. To make a booking, call Norma on 8259 2100. Want to know what's happening in the community? Subscribe to our fortnightly e-newsletter Playford News at playford.sa.gov.au and you'll be on top of stories, news and what's happening in Playford. It's local news for local people. COVID-19 has been a difficult time for us all and the health and safety of our community is our first priority. As a council, we want you to know we are still here and doing our best to continue delivering services to you. Our website outlines all the latest information about facilities, programs and services. Just visit playford.sa.gov.au. Responsible pet ownership is about looking after your best mate. By law, all dogs must be registered when they reach three months of age or within 14 days of being on a new property or if they have changed ownership. Registering your dog means they are given every opportunity to be returned to you if they ever get lost. And if your dog is desexed, microchipped and trained, you receive a discount. Registrations are renewed between the 1st of July and the 31st of August each year and can be done online at dogsandcatsonline.com.au. Did you know you can view your rates notice online at Playford Online Services? Simply register for an online account by visiting our website at playford.sa.gov.au and searching Playford Online Services. Once you've registered, you can request to have your rates notice delivered to your device or computer. Prefer to watch and learn? We've created some simple videos to show you how to register for an account, view your rates notices and set up direct debit. Simply search for Playford Online Services via the Playford website for more information. That website again, playford.sa.gov.au. Feedback about our city's future from our community is really important. It helps us prioritise your needs when planning projects, services and other initiatives. A convenient way to have your say and stay in the loop on any upcoming consultations is by registering your details on our Engagement Hub website at playford.engagementhub.com.au. We look forward to hearing from you. The new My Playford mobile app is here. You can now stay up to date with the latest council news and info, set bin reminders, make online payments and send through your customer requests, all in one place and at the touch of a button. Download the free My Playford app today for your iPhone or Android device.
Is it time to do a big clean up around the house? We can help get rid of your unwanted items with a hard waste collection. You can book Norma to pick it up from your front yard, up to two times per financial year. Or you can choose a voucher and take it to Norma yourself. They'll even lend you a trailer for free. To make a booking, call Norma on 8259 2100. Want to know what's happening in the community? Subscribe to our fortnightly e-newsletter, Playford News, at playford.sa.gov.au and you'll be on top of stories, news and what's happening in Playford. It's local news for local people. COVID-19 has been a difficult time for us all and the health and safety of our community is our first priority. As a council, we want you to know we are still here and doing our best to continue delivering services to you. Our website outlines all the latest information about facilities, programs and services. Just visit playford.sa.gov.au. Responsible pet ownership is about looking after your best mate. By law, all dogs must be registered when they reach three months of age or within 14 days of being on a new property or if they have changed ownership. Registering your dog means they are given every opportunity to be returned to you if they ever get lost. And if your dog is desexed, microchipped and trained, you receive a discount. Registrations are renewed between the 1st of July and the 31st of August each year and can be done online at dogsandcatsonline.com.au. Did you know you can view your rates notice online at Playford Online Services? Simply register for an online account by visiting our website at playford.sa.gov.au and searching Playford Online Services. Once you've registered, you can request to have your rates notice delivered to your device or computer. Prefer to watch and learn? We've created some simple videos to show you how to register for an account, view your rates notices and set up direct debit. Simply search for Playford Online Services via the Playford website for more information. That website again, playford.sa.gov.au. Feedback about our city's future from our community is really important. It helps us prioritise your needs when planning projects, services and other initiatives. A convenient way to have your say and stay in the loop on any upcoming consultations is by registering your details on our Engagement Hub website at playford.engagementhub.com.au. We look forward to hearing from you. The new My Playford mobile app is here. You can now stay up to date with the latest council news and info, set bin reminders, make online payments and send through your customer requests, all in one place and at the touch of a button. Download the free My Playford app today for your iPhone or Android device. Is it time to do a big clean up around the house? We can help get rid of your unwanted items with a hard waste collection. You can book Norma to pick it up from your front yard, up to two times per financial year. Or you can choose a voucher and take it to Norma yourself. They'll even lend you a trailer for free. To make a booking, call Norma on 8259 2100. Want to know what's happening in the community? Subscribe to our fortnightly e-newsletter, Playford News, at playford.sa.gov.au and you'll be on top of stories, news and what's happening in Playford. It's local news for local people.
Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Civic Events Committee meeting for Wednesday, the 4th of November. Do we have any apologies? No. Uh, we do have a quorum, thanks to Erin being up there on the screen. And uh, yes. Apology from Brett Callan, he's in Port Pirie and can't make it. Thank you, Councillor Halls. And any word on uh, Nicole? What about Nicole, Brett? He thinks she's an apology too. He thinks she's at work. All right. Thank Same you. If we could record those two apologies, please, and note the uh, non-attendance of the people who aren't here. Thank you very much. Right, we'll move on. Erin, um, can you hear me? No. How do I get Erin? She can hear me? Okay. Right, we have the confirmation of the minutes from the previous meeting, which was the 7th of October. Would somebody like to move that they're a true and accurate record? I will. Thank you, Councillor Halls and um, Councillor Ryan, you're seconding that. Is there any discussion on those minutes? All in favour? Thank you. Carried. Do we have any declarations of interest? Uh, we do, do not have any deputations or representations. Now, uh, under the staff reports, I'm bringing forward the um, uh, 2020 Christmas program to deal with first, but the first thing I need to inform the committee is that uh, our decision went to full council and uh, unfortunately the councillors weren't very happy with our decision, so they changed it to have some of the alternative events uh, brought forward to um, uh, actually be activated. So uh, whilst that wasn't what we were hoping, it's what happened. But what I would like is for anyone on the committee who would like to make any comment about that decision, I'm quite happy to open up for discussion. I can see Councillor Ryan reaching for his microphone. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, no, just very briefly, um, I was totally <clears throat> annoyed with the decision made in the chamber. Uh, I have put in about to put in next Tuesday a rescind motion for the November meeting uh, on that decision. I just believe that this committee has got the authority to make those sort of decisions. Um, I don't think it should have gone to the chamber in the first place. If we go back to Anzac Day, that was cancelled uh, by staff and rightly so because of COVID-19. And in my view, um, this is exactly the same situation. Like we might have a movie night, whatever. How do we work out who gets ticket, who doesn't? Um, and just the whole thing gets too messy, I believe. I have spoken to Louis three days after on the, three days after that, um, on the 27th. Uh, was the council meeting. I rang her on about the 30th uh, to tell her what my intentions were. I spoke to the CEO of Playford as well. I'm, I've been a, a councillor for 17 years and I have never, ever put him to a sin motion. But I feel strongly that this group has made a decision and to get overrun uh, by the chamber and Normally I can accept any decision and move on, but why have this committee, if it's happened now, it's going to happen again. And to me, I, I just can't see the point of sitting here, making decisions uh, and then getting rolled in the chamber. Uh, I just think it's grossly wrong. Um, you know, this is a very, very, very important committee for council. Uh, I have got an alternative, but I'm not going to 
shoot me bullets here. Uh, one way we can make the elected members feel warm and fuzzy about Christmas. Uh, but as I said, I'm not going to fire me bullets yet. Uh, I have spoken to other elected members and, and I have got a few of them on the side. Uh, so I'll wait and see what happens at the November meeting. But as I said, I, I thought long and hard. And I just think, God, if you're going to have this committee, uh, you know, let's accept the decisions that are made here on this group uh, and go from there. So we'll see what happens in, in November. Um, if I think what's going to happen will happen, uh, I just hope the staff haven't done a lot of work towards uh, Christmas. Beryl. The first knowledge I've got of this decision when I got here this afternoon, I've emailed um, a couple of times saying that, Gaul, uh, that uh, Elizabeth Playford Lyons would do the catering for Australia Day. Surely it would have been some sort of courtesy to have let me know what the, what the council decision was. I'm very cross and I think coming here is, is a little bit pointless if decisions we made aren't recommended or followed through. Can you turn your light off please, Beryl? Yeah. Thank you very much. Mayor Doherty. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, obviously, uh, the council made their decision and in my role as all elected members, we need to support what the council decides, even if it may not be our personal view. And I think this committee was, was fairly supportive of a different or alternative motion at the last committee meeting. But uh, up until, as Councillor Ryan points out, uh, his motion goes to the floor, then obviously we'll, we'll support what the council decides. But I think most of the people around this chamber, including well, th this committee meeting, I should say, uh, have an alternative view and probably concur wholeheartedly with Councillor Ryan and what he's trying to do. Um, just two points though, slightly involved with this, but on a side note. Um, one, I do agree with uh, Beryl. I think it's disappointing that they weren't, that committee members weren't notified. And secondly, I'm also disappointed in the fact of, that's my understanding that at the council meeting, council's now decided to record all committee meetings and statutory meetings which means everybody that's here today will now have their item recorded and, re and left on the council website. It's my understanding that committee members haven't been made aware of that fact. So again, it's disappointing if that is the case that there has been a change of how um, minutes are recorded and obviously people on Zoom and others need to know that they'll now be recorded and left on the website to be used, which is a different practice to previously. And I'm just checking with governance. That's my understanding is what occurred, but I, I'd like to see committee members notified of that and secondly, that other committee members on different committees are also notified. And it's disappointing that uh, those members don't have the opportunity to A, know that, or B, um, consider uh, whether it's something for them now knowing that those things are going to be recorded. So I'd just like to raise that, Madam Chair. Erin, did you wish to speak? No. I'd like to just uh, reflect on what Councillor Ryan has said about the Civic Events Committee. The Civic Events Committee in this council is very unique. I attended an Australia Day conference a few years ago where I sat with the South Australian contingent. I was the only elected member on that table of 14 people. The others were all staff members from various councils and they were absolutely amazed that this council had a civic events committee that comprised staff, elected members and members of the community from service clubs. They thought it was just fantastic and wanted to hear everything I had to say about our committee. I feel myself that this is a committee that needs to continue. It's well known, our events are excellent, and I believe that the committee has a great input into the events. I too was disappointed by the, the uh, um, motion that was put by the council members, but 
I guess that because we were cancelling a main event and wanted to put the money towards something else, it had to go to a council decision. And I do understand that Councillor Ryan was upset about that and I was extremely as well. However, I believe that it's time to move on. The staff have already planning uh, events for Christmas and they will talk about that in a moment, but I'm concerned that if we wait until the council meeting in November, at the end of November, I think it's the 24th off the top of my head, the staff will have done so much work and it will be all wasted and we won't have anything to give the residents. So whilst I'm disappointed with the decision, I do feel that we have to move on and make sure that we do all of these things that the council have requested. But I understand too that Councillor Ryan feels that the committee is wasted. I don't feel the committee is wasted at all. I believe that some fabulous decisions have been made by this committee over the time and will continue to. And it's fantastic that we have people like like Rotary and Lions and um, the Girl Guides, the Boy Scouts, Youth Advisory Committee and the others who we haven't seen for a while but they are on the committee that are here helping us make the right decision for our different events. So thank you. Does anyone else have any comment? Councillor Halls. Thank you, um, Councillor Smallwood-Smith. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm very upset that our, our fellow elected members um, agreed to take a different tact. I understand that we all want to have Christmas and um, as well and move on. I'm concerned that some of the things that um, the, um, they, they want to have, like the movies, um, I can't see them getting um, that approved in such a short time because um, I know that um, they are bogged down with... Um, uh, COVID management plans at SA Health um, because uh, the one for the Playford Christmas pageant still hadn't been uh, uh, reached the assessor just last week until I managed to ring up and one of our um, residents was answering the phone. <laughs> she works there. Um, who was kind enough to push push the idea um, and get it sorted out. But there, they are, there are so many things that you know, it's taking so long to write those management plans and you do need a COVID management plan for um, even a movie night and it needs to be closed in, it can't be out in the public area so, you know, where anybody could walk in. So you have to contact Trace. So uh, I'm concerned that, you know, in the short time, that's not even going to be possible because with Christmas coming up, there's a lot of things that are, are still on their desk that they haven't got to yet. But... Um, I think um, Councillor Smallwood-Smith is right. We, we need to move on. And I, I applaud um, Councillor Ryan for his, um, his thoughts and what he plans to do. I think that um, we need to uh, do that kind of thing so that we can make it known that it's um, not, not acceptable. This committee should be in its own right, have the say. And um, I think we need to make sure that that is in policy somewhere. Thank you, Councillor Hall. Uh, Ms Bufka? Oh, sorry, Councillor Ryan. No, it would be good to hear from the staff, I think. Uh, yes, I was just going to introduce um, Lily. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to acknowledge the committee um, and um, your reflections and really you know, respectfully hear that. Um, for us, now that the council has resolved and made the decision to, to support the smaller activation program, that means we, we needed to straight away start, you know, start in terms of planning and implementing it. Um, I think the key things are that all activities under the alternative program have to be COVID safe. Um, and, that's in the, and that lens is all across what we will be talking to you about. None of the activities that we propose will require a COVID management plan like um, the carols did or like um, the pageant did because none of them will have over a thousand people there. That will be quite small scale. And there's only, um, yeah, we'll, we'll speak to that in a moment. So I think for us, it's about maintaining maintaining that safety aspect, which is paramount. So the smaller 
the smaller elements um, in different locations of the city, but also in being really wise with the expenditure of um, the money so that half of it can be allocated to our other civic events as well, which was in the spirit of what this committee was talking about at our last committee meeting. So I guess they're two, they're two fundamental aspects um, of this for me. Chloe has prepared a couple of slides to talk you through, um, I guess, the planning that we've now undertaken and some of the implementation. I, I really appreciate Councillor Ryan's um, comments early on. Based on the resolution and then the timing of needing to put on activities and the events means we had to start pretty much the day after to get things going. So we need to keep following that track until whatever happens. Um, and I think you'll appreciate and understand that as well. Um, Chloe will talk to you about what, um, I guess, what, what is planned based on the safety, based on um, making sure that only half the budget is used. Um, I think they're the key, the key elements. So if I hand over to Chloe. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Um, so, as Lily um, discussed, I'm here to share with you um, the plans for the Christmas in Playford program um, as a result of the Council's um, motion. So, we have taken that motion and looked at uh, things that are achievable for us to do in a COVID safe way. Um, and then, obviously, being able to still connect with our community. So, we've got the outdoor cinema series. Uh, mini festive installations, which are the Christmas trees, a community display competition, and the festive banners that will dress the city. So just a brief overview of each of those um, activations that we're looking at. So the outdoor cinema series, um, you can see here, we've got the budget there for those two events. Um, we're proposing to host, or we've confirmed to host those um, cinema series on um, Saturday the 5th and Saturday the 12th of December at Ex Convenience Oval. So the reason for hosting it there is obviously as um, Councillor Halls has suggested, being able to um, be COVID safe, um, manage a crowd, um, being able to provide line marking, so having two by four metre squares where five people can, um, families can sit uh, at a socially distance, um, or oh, being socially distanced. Um, and then we're obviously utilising um, platforms such as Eventbrite to be able to register for the outdoor cinema series. And we obviously then submit a COVID safe plan. So we're not under the, the time pressure of a COVID management plan, which is really good so we can easily deliver that one. Uh, we then have our mini festive installations, which are our um, Christmas trees, which will be um, placed around um, the all community centres um, around the Playford area um, throughout December. So we are with um, working with the Playford Men's Shed to make those Christmas trees. Um, there will be uh, baubles available at each of the community centres that we're encouraging residents and community members to write their messages of cheer for. Um, obviously, one of the committee's um, concerns with um, doing such an activation in um, the plaza was that it would encourage um, large groups of people to gather um, by doing this at our community centres. We're obviously, again, working under those community safe plans, uh, sorry, the COVID safe plans, um, and we're able to work with the community centres to ensure safe practices such as pen management. The next um, activation that we're doing is a community display competition. Now, originally this was um, put to the committee and council as a window display, um, but if, upon reflection and wanting to make it um, more about the meaning um, of the season for people, um, we are asking people to um, create a, a meaningful display in their homes, whether that be a window or their front garden, um, and submit that via social media or email with a 25 words or less meaning of their festive display. Um, so we're looking for them to show, obviously, creativity, reflection and sentiment. Um, we're proposing that the judging panel be the mayor, the presiding member and a member of the um, City of Playford staff. 
Um, obviously, we are incentivising this with prize money, so you can see the different prize levels there that will be um, presented as vouchers, and uh, we're looking to do this from the 16th of November until the 13th, with the winner announced on the 16th of December. And then finally, we are looking to do um, dress the city in festive banners. So, so that we're utilising this, um, you know, this, these banners across um, the Main North Road and Elizabeth area, we're looking to put them up between December and January, so this, the Playford festive season. So it's carrying through from Christmas to Australia Day. Um, that will allow us to have that continued investment. Um, those banners will Excuse then Excuse me. Oh. Excuse yes. me. Erin can't see anything. Is there a reason why she can't see the um, what's up on the displays? Thank you. Keep going? No worries. Um, so those banners, when they come down in January, um, they'll be able to be um, put back up um, in the following festive season, 2021 into 2022. So does anyone have any questions or...? That's all right. Through the chair, can I say, Chloe, you know, I mean, whatever the vote is, uh, the next vote, uh, we'll go forward with that. Um, but the plan that I have, which, I, as I said, I'm not going to fire the bullets now, uh, I can guarantee you, it'll get plenty of media, plenty, and will cost you snippets, nothing, than a couple of grand total. So, wait and see. But, uh, I mean, you've got to do what you've got to do. Mm -hmm. But I, as an elected member, and particularly on this committee, someone's got to make a stand that it never happens again this way. If you're going to have this committee, these decisions made here are made, end the story. So, we'll see what happens. Councillor Halls. Thank you. Um, yes, so just going with what uh, the program that's planned. Um, so um, at the Oval, how long is that going to be for? So we're looking at a 6.30 opening for the gates. Um, obviously, we're conscious of when we're able to host with, with regards to sunlight. So from 6.30 till 7.30 um, with the proposed movie time start at 7.30. Right. So will they be bringing their own drinks? Yes, so we're basically encouraging a picnic um, theme. Uh, we will have one um, small vendor there, Cool Cones, to provide ice creams, things like that, and coffee. Um, but we wanted to keep it very limited. So, and that's 500? Well, it will be 400 in the initial release, the first release, based on what? Um, has been executed in the past. The numbers were sitting around 350 um, community members that came out to um, a cinema night. So we wanted to sort of follow that and then see what what, re, um, what response we got from that. And these are all free? They are, yes. Everything all free? is uh, free of charge. And um, will the um, this committee and elected members be exceptional to that 400? To the you know that might want to go or is that that's a good question <laughs> do we are we considered part of the the team the, through yeah, as in a staff member so we're not counted in there yeah yeah, yeah yeah do you want to yeah through through the chair um would need to check on that but yeah. just please be assured that the committee and elected members even if you're not in addition you would be part of that you know you, you all would be there yes. for an extended yeah. invitation. We'd be included. In, of of uh, course. But, yep. and, and this is going to, um, the, the thing is like going to be on Eventbrite to register or something like that? Correct. And um, the registration, um, our service desk people will be able to assist our members of the community with some of that. Correct. Because as you know, we do not have um, a high device range for some of these, uh, from a, for some of our residents who don't know, they have the basic phone, but they don't have any other access to those things. Absolutely. So 
Um, one of the points that we um, have discussed is providing that service to our community. Um, so we will brief our customer care team, um, obviously when this is released, um, and that um, the team and myself um, will be available to assist those residents who want to attend but don't have the mm -hmm. facilities to register themselves. It's something that we can do for our community. Okay. All right. Um, so I also happen to know there are a few things that need to be fixed at that venue before that goes ahead. So I might talk with Lily about that, um, particularly the, um, one of the uh, entrances that um, uh, onto the oval itself um, that needs to be repaired before anybody can walk on it. Um, the Christmas trees. Um, the community centres, how many community centres have we, are we going to have? I, is that, are we talking about like the McVitie Centre which is leased and the rise? Um, through the chair, it is um, predominantly council community, council, you know, council community? run centres but That's including, sorry, yeah, in, council but we uh, would like to include John McVitie Centre in that one. Yeah, I, I was... Yeah. That was what I was trying to check because people are asking where our community centres are and how many we've got. So I don't quite, that's one thing that I've always um, found that we never know how many and where they actually are. So um, the community display um, sounds really meaningful. Um, the mayor, chair, and a staff member, I think that's brilliant. The festive banners. Um, I was wondering about those, whether um, before the decisions made for those, whether um, we could be consulted via email um, as to uh, choosing the appropriate um, theme? Theme? Theme. Uh, through the chair, we, we can certainly send that out. There's already a concept right now that's um the designers are close to finalising. I can talk you through it, but I can send it around. Mm. So it is essentially, the idea is um, to be festive, like it's, it's the theme is festive Playford. So you would have one banner that would have kind of a background of, you know, like a, a soft background of lights or something that says festive Playford. So a, a more simpler one than the second banner would be um, a hero image from one of our events. So. Um, from like a Christmas type event like carols. Then the next one would be from a, an event like Australia Day. So you would have, I couldn't send them all, I could, but we haven't kind of finalised every one, but they're all images from one of our civic events that would be used as a hero image. And in between saying festive Playford. That way you could use them in January and February and really have that, um, I guess those banners bookending our civic events, those kind of celebratory civic events. I kind of think that festive banners for Christmas need to be separated out from the Australia Day stuff. Um, we, 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 we should have a, a, a clear line between the, the Christmas stuff and then the Australia Day stuff. And I've always felt that we've wasted money by not having... Um, waste money, yeah about not having the, utilising the poles that, that we have around um, Playford and they've been there for many years and we haven't been using them. And that we should always, we should have the things that we can, festive banners that we can put up for the Christmas, Australia Day, the carols, you know, all of that um, sort of thing should be an Anzac. Um, we should have, we should have things that we can put up. And I know there's a cost, but we need to figure out something that we can do that is, is different because if you've got the same thing running um, from Christmas to Australia, to Australia Day, um, it's not going. It's going to be the same. There's going to be no oomph, no, no um, excitement because it's there all the time. That's that's where we come unstuck with things. I mean, I like um, the Gawler, um Council um, have got COVID. Po signs, um, banners going down the main street and they change their banners, you know, um, all the time. So, and I think that we should be doing similar. They've set a good example for us. Through the chair, if I may. Um, it is always that balancing act of, um, 
you know, using our money wisely and our resources and the investment in those banners, you know, as we can see, 20,000 up to to do the one lot is significant. Um, this is a, for us, we feel it's a really, um, a really balanced way of using, you know, um, our resources and money wisely and delivering on something. People haven't seen anything on those banners, like you said, for a long time. I, I feel like the concept we've got with those hero, the big images of people and things will have a presence that will dress up the city. Those banners aren't designed, and I guess as, as a note, just those banners aren't designed necessarily to promote an event as such. Um, there's not enough room on them to do that. It's about kind of creating that sense of place, as you said. We we do need to, that they have an actual um, a, a production time of around up to four weeks. So we are needing to sign off on that design very quickly. Mayor Docherty. Yeah, just a quick question on, um, Council's approved this to be their, their Christmas event. So looking at our charter, at what point does this committee now actually have the opportunity to A, to enact this and B, look at how it expends the funds which are now related to this committee? Because we've got an information report here and this is happening, but where's our opportunity to actually amend that or actually say we think we should do less of that or more of that? Irrelevant to one point when Councillor Ryan's got his rescission motion over here, but our role is to not define the concept. The council's done that for us by saying we must have a Christmas program. But at what point are we going to actually have a discussion and, and or an opportunity to say, well, we've got a Christmas program, but we don't think that's appropriate. We'd rather put that money into more Christmas trees or more X, Y, and Z. At what point is this committee going to have that involvement as set out in the terms of its charter? Through the chair now. So we, while it's brought to you as a discussion item, the, the time between the council decision last week and the producing, you know, and having reports and stuff ready, that we didn't have sufficient time to produce a report. So we can, we can do that now. Um, we've, we've held off on promoting, like promoting kind of the activities we're doing until after this committee, committee met, so that we enabled, you know, had the time to discuss that here. Um, Things have all been lined up, as I've talked about. Like, so we've had to go and get quotes, work out a whole bunch of things to understand um, how much we can do and can't do. But the committee now has that ability to have that discussion. Thank you, Beryl. It would, it would be easier to have a discussion if there was a bit of forewarning to it. That I don't understand when I've been on email why nothing has nothing was said. Through the chair, I um, appreciate what you're saying, Beryl, and I do apologise that we haven't um, formally notified the committee of the decision before today. That is not a lot of comfort. Thank you. Councillor Ryan. Um, I said I wouldn't fire me bullets, but I will. Um, my suggestion will be to keep the elected members on site would be to give $1,000 to the following groups. The Smith Family, Salvation Army, St Vincent de Paul, and Anglicare, the Christmas Hampers. They must be, the money must be spent with people with employment. Pretty simple. It'll make everybody feel wonderful and actually save us a bit of money. Um, and I think at the end of the day, and the elected members I've spoke to uh, seem quite happy with that idea, uh, and I'm sure that it will get media attention. Uh, here we are, a council that does care, and all of a sudden there's an extra $4,000 out there uh, to help with a bit of Christmas cheer for those that are less fortunate than ourselves. So that's my plan. Uh, now you know. Uh, you can do some homework and try to blow me out the water, but uh, I'm still going forward. Uh, I just think if this committee is going to have any real relevance at all, we've got to stand up now. Simple as that. Councillor Halls. Oh, thank you, uh, Councillor Smallwood-Smith. Um, yes, the, um, the slides went through very quickly. Um, and I didn't see um, costings for um, 
the community display uh, submission via email, the, the um, festive display, 25 words or less, what the prizes and the age limits were going to be. So. I think personally that we should delete this one and not do it. I'd like to hear from my other uh, members of the committee as to, I think we need to cull some of this. We don't have to do everything on the list that the elected members said because they said that uh, they just wanted it activated. Um, I just don't think that this is a good one. Mayor Doherty. Just a couple of questions. The COVID management plan is for events that are greater than 1,000 and need SA Health to uh, via the, the state committee to determine, that's correct. So the COVID safety plan, are we still required to submit a COVID safety plan for any or all of the events that are proposed up on the screen? That's my first question. Uh, through the chair, um, with regards to COVID safety plans, they are a lot more simpler than COVID management plans. So it's basically an intent that you're going to have um, an activity that is a public defined activity. Um, it has to be uh, under a thousand people um, and you have to provide exact locations as to where you're going to have that. With, so say for example, for, um, ex, uh, for the um, cinema series, we would need to complete it saying we were having uh, one for each um, series as well, each event. Um, we're having it at, on Saturday, the 5th of December, we're expecting um, up to 400 people. Uh, we are going to be implementing the following COVID safe measures with regards to social distancing. Um, and that is then, it's, a, it's an immediate um, acceptance of a COVID safe plan. There's no waiting. Um, it basically records with SA Health that we've recorded our intent to do this um, and we can be followed up by SAPOL or a member of SA Health in that regard. Okay. Um, in relation to the community display competition, you've got a budget up there of $500. So I'm taking the $500 in relation to the three prizes because that equals $500. Correct. So at what point from a budgetary perspective, how do you promote this in terms of so there's no other spend of council in relation to that item there? It's solely $500. Through the chair, this is essentially a marketing activation. So this would be managed through our social media channels. It's a pretty much a social media digital marketing activation. And this is this is my problem. This is what I raised last time at the committee. I think we were looking at doing it solely at Facebook. Um, I don't have any issue with the concept, but again, we are now having another event that's solely on our social media. So if you are a member of this city or resident of this city who is not on email or not on our Facebook page or not on social media, and we have suburbs in this city where one in three households don't have access to the internet at home or any other device in their, in their ballywick to access that, does this become something in which if you're not on that group or that ability and we've got no other money to spend and market on, then people are disadvantaged because there's not $1 in there to put a poster up in the community centre at Elizabeth Rise, not $1 to put a poster up uh, somewhere at the John McVitie Centre, for example. So to me, uh, this, is, this is where my issue comes in with some of this stuff, whereas when you're gonna be asking for people to come along to the community events, that will be on social media, they'll probably get picked up in the media, there'll be other avenues which will be, that will be promoted, it won't solely be promoted, I hope it wouldn't solely be promoted on our council Facebook page. Um, this is my point. At what point do we become a, elitist enough that only a certain cohort exactly. of people see these events? Um, I, I don't have a problem necessarily with the Christmas tree idea. I think that's a great idea. I think that doing that in the uh, relevant community centres is a wonderful thing. I think that gives an opportunity for people to a, access the centres that may not have been there before, people who do access the centres. I think that's a very good thing. It's great that we're involving the men's shed, so I think that's a, a very worthwhile cause. 
in relation to the cinema events. I mean, I, I, as I said last time, I still have a fundamental view that if we're counselling one event, because it's a large outdoor gathering, to have two lots of smaller events probably doesn't make sense, but I could live with one event. I don't know whether two um, cinema events are worth um, the effort, but again, I mean, I don't think anything that's here worries me, but it does worry me around this community display competition mm -hmm. because the other two events that you've talked about can be accessed by anyone. You only have to have a social media account to access this and that's what worries me. And I don't think that's fair on a universal basis that you only get to be involved with a chance for a prize if you're on the council's social media. Um, through the chair, that's really, you know, they're really fair reflections. There's Things like this, um, in terms of printing of posters, can be done in-house, so we don't need the budget for that. I think your point around actually having the posters up in the community centres alongside all the trees, etc., you know, is a really good one, but that would be within our own printing kind of capabilities within council. We wouldn't actually print those externally, I think, at that size. Um, you can... While it is, you know, a social media strategy, essentially, you can email your photos to council as well. But it's still for, a digital... Chair, I, I get that, and that's not a problem. But if you're only going to be advertising it on your Facebook page, it doesn't get to your email address. That's my point. If you don't advertise it anywhere outside of our socials, it doesn't matter if you have an email or a carrier pigeon to bring it in. The point is you can't, you can't find out about it in the first place. And that's my point, is that the other items that we talk about will be out and about amongst the community, whereas this is solely promoted on our socials, and I just think we're potentially not including enough of the community, but um, that, that, that's my point. Through the chair, we can certainly put posters up alongside the Christmas tree activations in the community centres and other places promoting the opportunity. Thank you. Councillor Halls. Thank you. Um, and thank you, um, Mayor Doherty, for um, fleshing out what I was trying to think about for this competition. But I'd just like to say, no matter how much we do this in-house, a cost will be allocated to the department. So advertising media will allocate a cost to us um, out of our budget somewhere. And the posters photocopying is allocated, is a cost to to this department. Um, so my concerns are that we still are going to be a cost above the $500 budgeted for this. There is still going to be a cost. There is the time of the person specifically set up to do this. There's a cost. There's a cost to the phone calls that, um, for clarification. So there is a cost to every single thing we do, and we forget sometimes that there is a cost um, in time and in money um, and, and goods to, to put on something like this, and this is something that I see that could blow right out of proportion. Through the chair, that's a really good point and a really good reminder for us all. All of our, to put on any of our civic events throughout the calendar year, um, we're using existing, you know, resources, you know, within the council. Our budget is about those kind of, um, a lot of it is about the promotion that we pay for, like to get printed or um, things done externally. Um, it's for contractors, it's for all, all those elements, but it's also for paying staff for on the day of the event. But you're right, people do things around, um, the marketing components will be done, but, but, but it's part of their regular jobs. Um, the printing, look, I have no issue with the printing costs for, this is a small scale, and um, the, pr the printing costs are in my area and that we wouldn't be getting additional costs, it would just be um, what's normally there. So I'm comfortable with that side of it. Erin, you wish to say something? We only have 12 days to set this all up. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm talking to the person on Zoom. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Erin, do you wish to speak? Um, yes, as I can't see anything on the screen and I don't have an agenda, can people um, quote prices when they're talking about stuff? And thank you, Glenn, for quoting the price for the, um, the displays because I'm sitting here like, what am I doing here? Because I can see nothing.
Uh, Erin, would you like us to read the cost, the budget for each of the activations? Yes, please. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. uh, so for the outdoor cinema series, the budget is $12,000. Uh, the budget for the Christmas trees is $2,500. The budget for the community display is $500. And the banners are $20,000. Beryl. We do realise um, there's only 12 days between now and start and the start of the uh, promotion. I mean, is it possible to get it all underway in that short time? Um, for for the display community dis display activity? Yeah. Yes. Yes, it is. In twelve days. We can it. Yes, we can we can do that really quickly. Right. Because it is predominantly through. You know, it's, it's about developing a poster and through social media, it's about writing some content. We can do that really quickly. My understanding was that the mayor wasn't particularly happy with doing it because it limits the number of people that can participate. I think, um, I guess one of my reflections on this whole program is that e each of those activities will probably attract different kinds of um, community and do you know so, so some might attract people who are more on social media families might be more interested in in cinemas so it will kind of hit those different groups to me it sounds a little bit elitist that's my opinion uh, councillor halls uh yes thank you um the um when the with the community display uh, are they going to be um, mounted in the Great Hall at some stage, or what's what's the the plan um, for that? Yeah. Um, no, they won't be mounted anywhere. So the, the I guess we're 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 not sure what people mm. would decide to do for these displays. You know, if you think of Anzac Day when people. Um, did some small things in their front gardens, whether they lit candles or did, uh, did you know, did small arrangements. That's what people might decide to do, something like that. Um, there might be things that they might dress their windows. It might be anything that means something to them, and I don't expect it would necessarily be mobile in that sense. I was just thinking that if we're taking photos of, of that and putting in um, the story, um, that... You know, we would. Um, it'd be good to have something like that if you're going to uh, have it, um, so that other people can see. Um, you know, at the end of the event, put it up so that people can see who participated and the the rest of the community who couldn't um, do anything or didn't have the abilities to do anything might be able to get some um, spirit, Christmas spirit from what people have done and said. And the other question I have is, are we voting on the, the, um, these activations to go ahead as they are? Please. Mayor Doherty. Just in a comment back to, to Beryl's point, um, if there's some other activation which I'm hearing from the staff that there is around posters and things that I'm, I can live with a competition display, if there's other ways and people to get involved with that. Um, and I would hope that for the Christmas trees after this year, that potentially in our 2021 carols, we might be able to take the Christmas trees there for people at the Christmas event to then do some messages or we could do them in nursing homes in the future, as I hope that this wouldn't, they wouldn't be thrown in the bin after this year's event and actually be kept and used at our other civic events um, would make a perfect opportunity for that, I would have thought. I'm very conscious of the fact that the council has made a decision in uh, saying that they want some of these displays and I believe that we need to move ahead. And I know, Councillor Ryan, you're anxious to put in your uh, rescinding motion, but we can't just stop and do nothing. Though I'm, I'm not really sure where the committee wants 
wants the staff to go from now. So I'm open to some ideas, but uh, uh, because it's a council decision, we, we can't really stop what they're, they're planning to do at the moment. So if someone's got some ideas, please tell me. Keep planning. Simple as that. I think now that we've fleshed out a little bit more about what's going on and we've helped to interrogate it yeah. um, and get an understanding, I'd, I'd hope that we've given some guidance as the Civic Events Committee from our discussion today that the staff will go away and add some things to the things they've already got planned, so the posters and connecting up and doing some of those things. Um, uh, while it may or may not eventuate, depending on what the council decision is in November, um, I, I don't necessarily think we can... Well, we definitely can't vote to stop it. I do think we have some role in our charter if we wanted to amend, potentially amend or enact how it's done, but I think with only, as Beryl made a very pertinent point, with only 12 odd days yeah. to go, it would be <coughs> probably remiss of us if we amend too much of how it's done, but I think with that bit of interrogation, I have a bit more comfort to know that these things are, are being worked on, so I'm just happy to note what we've been told today in the discussion and the staff will continue on to do what they need to do. Um, thank you, Mayor Doherty. I tend to agree with you, so I think I don't think that we need a motion for that because it is something that's already in the wind. Chloe, have you got anything extra you want to add to that before we move on? No, thank you. Well, thank you very much for that. We'll now go to the Australia Day discussion. And um, Chloe, have you got some thoughts on that? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so in our report, um, what we have put towards uh, to the um, Civic Events Committee here today is um, the recommend date, oh, sorry. Um, that the committee approves the planning scope for the 2021 Playford Australia Day celebrations. Uh, we would also like the committee to endorse the following uh, representatives to be on the Australia Day Council. Okay, cool. Sorry. Um, so a few key points um, that I would like to raise from the report here. Um, we, uh, first and foremost, um, I wanted to uh, talk to the Australia Day Awards um, and nominations. So we've got a total of eight nominations at the moment. Uh, we've got five Citizen of the Year Award nominations, one Young Citizen of the Year Award nomination, two Community Group and Initiative uh, nominations, and no um, Sporting Club of the Year nominations. So currently the staff are going out and speaking with key stakeholders. Um, and I've got some Australia Day Awards posters here for the committee to take back to their communities. <laughs> um, a, uh, talking to um, the Australia Day celebrations for 2021 in itself, um, we have uh, started obviously started that planning as of um, the last committee meeting. Um, we have uh, been in regular contact with SA Health, um, the manage COVID management planning review team uh, for advice and support, which is helping us greatly when we're putting together our COVID management plan for this event. Um, based on the previous analysis of holding um, large scale events at Fremont Park, um, it's not being considered uh, for this event moving forward into 2021. Um, so we have met with Gen a Central Districts Football Club and they have indicated that they are happy for us to host at the Oval, which is wonderful. Um, we are also currently meeting with other key stakeholders, um, such as production and infrastructure to 
really nut down how we're going to be able to execute that event um, on ex convenience oval in a COVID safe way. Uh, we are currently working with our draft COVID management plan with the, uh, the intent to have that submitted um, to SA Health by close of business this Friday, which is on track to happen. Uh, we have been successful in a, uh, securing a COVID safe grant through the National Australia Day Council, which is wonderful. So those funds will be um, allocated separately out of the civic or from the civic events budget um, and tracked so that we can um, properly record what we're being spent, what we're spending on um, from a COVID safe management perspective. We've also been successful in securing the COVID safe grant, uh, the branding, sorry, the um, Australia Day branding grant, which was $1,000 as well. Um, and then obviously the event budget is going to be bolstered by the savings from the Christmas activation program. We're currently in negotiation with entertainers and masters of ceremonies, um, and we have been um, liaising with uh, the Elizabeth Playford Lions Club, as well as the Rotary Club of Elizabeth, to confirm whether they would, uh, their intent to uh, run the barbecue on Australia Day, which the Lions Club have indicated that they would. Um, and we are continuing um, in investigating how we can COVID safe deliver food and drink, as well as provide shade for people on the Oval. Thank you, Chloe. Uh, has anybody got any questions of Chloe in regard to the report, Mayor Doherty? Um, actually, a very good report, so I'm, I'm happy to endorse pretty much all of the content, but I just have a couple of, a couple of questions. Sure. So our current budget is $86,810, mm -hmm. plus the $20,000 grant for COVID, mm -hmm. so then that 20,000 is going to be spent on COVID related issues. So out of the 86,810, what would we normally spend on items which could now be covered by the COVID grant, essentially? That's my first question. This, through the chair. Uh, that's what I'm actually working on at the moment. So what's really important to us is to understand what is the difference that it costs to run an event such as this in, in the current COVID environment. So what we're actually doing is looking at, okay, so normally we would spend, I, I'm gonna use this as an example, Weslow Security, normally we allocate $5,000 to that line. Um, we've liaised and got a quote from Weslow Security and that is an additional $3,500 that we are needing to spend to introduce the COVID marshals to monitor and manage those areas. So we're able to clearly define what we have spent in the past and what we have allocated versus what we actually need to do um, from a COVID safe perspective. And I'm presuming that the $20,000 grant is a use it or lose it. So i.e. if you don't spend the full 20,000, whatever's got to not be used goes back? Correct. Okay, so obviously we want to make sure we expend uh, grants Absolutely. appropriately, and obviously for anyone from like the Auditor General who may be watching this at home on the internet, um, of course we'll expend all of our money appropriately, but I'm presuming that we'll make sure that we uh, are not going to underdo our relation to COVID. Um, I would hate to see that we send part of that money back no, we have and then to find that we haven't used or could have used it uh, more uh, expeditiously to meet our needs. Through the chair, no, we actually have to spend up to that amount. So we have to, we had to provide the $86,810 as what is our budget. And then we have to be mm. able to spend that $20,000 extra. So, uh, which is, is looking that, that it is gonna be that way as well, so. Um, I'm also interested in item 1418, or oh, sorry, 418, I should say, which is in the event budget will be bolstered by savings from the Christmas activation program. So at this point in time, what do you foresee as the savings for the Christmas Activation Program compared to the Christmas Carols, and what will that add to the budget bottom line? Mm -hmm. um, we are budgeting $40,000 for the Christmas Activation Program, which leaves us f over 40 from that towards the other events, so just over half for our, for our others. We, you know, we don't... Um, you know, we still have those unknowns, right? So for Anzac Day, like that, and the type of event it is, what we're going to require for to make that COVID safe as well. So having that extra money will be helpful. And my only other question is, what is the absolute maximum capacity 
of the Australia Day event at Central Districts. So in terms of numbers, what's our absolute capacity number of having individuals at that event? Through the chair, we've set the maximum capacity for 3,500. Yep, so we've set that, but what is the, what, what is the actual capacity of that site? Off the top of my head, and I can confirm that, is 4,798. <laughs> so my question is, while we may have set the limit at 3,500, my question in relation to the COVID safe management plan is will we be submitting the plan with our intention to fully expend the site at 4,798, but our intention is to only have 3,500. So what I'm saying is I don't want, to, I don't want council to receive a approved COVID safe management plan for 3,500 when we have the actual bidder capacity and then we find out on the day more people want to come and we have to turn them away. And then we find out we've turned people away when we could have had a better capacity management submitted in at the time. So that's my question is, how are we pitching that to SA Health? Through the chair. Um, as a part of the COVID management plan, we are to put the exact maximum capacity based on square meterage. So we will list that the absolute maximum capacity is 4,798 persons, but we are looking to have up to 3,500. So in the document that will be submitted to SA Health, we'll list that. Thank you, Beryl. You need to turn your light back on. It does say all staff, volunteers and vendors will be, will be required to complete a COVID awareness training. Will, the count, will that be organised by the council or how would that work? Yeah, uh, sorry, through the chair. Um, so uh, the events and activations team will supply that COVID awareness training to all contractors and vendors. It's a free training, it's an online training. Um, again, if we've got people that we can't, that, that need assistance with accessing that, I'm sure that we can provide that, but it's a 30 minute um, training that's online, that's very simple to complete, and it uh, is basically around um, infection control. Right. It says as well, all vendors will be required to provide their COVID safe plan. Mm -hmm. Now we are volunteering and by donating, are we classified as a vendor? That's a really good question. That's something that I would need to provide, um, seek further clarification around, such as um, whether elected members and council committee members are considered staff. So I can find further information on that. Right, thank you. Through the chair, if I may, um, we would certainly, um, Either way, regardless of whether you're a vendor or, or, or not in that consideration, we would support you in or support um, our volunteers in developing what they needed to, so you wouldn't be left on your own in that regard. Thank you. Okay, That's the really uh, interesting. Um, I do note that uh, for the pageant, we were going to have 3,500 and we were going to have to supply 17 COVID marshals for that 3,500. So I suspect that you're going to need to employ a lot more for that event in that space. Um, having just tried to write my own manage COVID management plan for that pageant um, and having to cancel it because we couldn't find the money to um, get the COVID marshals and a few other things. So um, it sound, it's pretty good. I, I'm, I'm pleased with the, this. I'm worried about the COVID management plan. Um, I am aware that um, uh, any vendors will come under the COVID management and concern of council. It will not be up to the vendors to concern themselves with the lineups. Um, at the vendors, it will be the responsibility of council um, for that and to make sure that um, we will have to have our own COVID marshal in the in the area, I think, for the um, um, uh, in the uh, barbecue area or whatever vendor it is, um, all vendors will have to have some form of management in there. <sighs> Um, the other thing is that I am concerned that 
Um, the panel for the representatives on the Australia Day Awards should be made in a confidential forum um, because I don't believe that anybody should know who they are um, because um, I think that that just leaves scope for harassment um, at this point and I think that that would be the best way to follow for that. If I could have some, and I think Erin wants. So I do believe, um, I'll just let you know that the Rotary Club has sent their reply today. I've just had a message to say that they will be uh, attending. Um, uh, the. They are co-organisers with the Lions for the barbecue. Um, through the chair, if I speak to the uh, the judging panel, in previous years we've not d undertaken any confidential um, motions regarding that. We've always listed um, the representatives that will be on the panel in minutes. Um, Councillor Hall, I, I know exactly where you're coming from and um, perhaps it could be held in confidence. It could be. I think it could be, yes. I, I, I don't have a problem with it. Mm. Um, and I do know where you're coming from and I don't think I need to speak out about that. No, thank you. And because um, I'd like to make my suggestions for um, that, but I would rather do it in confidence. Thank you. That's so, all right. No, I, don't, I just agree with that totally. I think we should be open and transparent. Uh, and if anyone's name comes up and you happen to be on that uh, panel, you should automatically eliminate yourself from that situation. So um, I, th I really think it should be open and transparent. Look, I, I totally agree with you, Councillor Ryan. The only thing that is bothering me is that um, I have received some pressure from other elected members who feel that the last panel was a little bit biased. I don't agree with it. I think that uh, two people who should be on that are, of course, the Mayor and myself. Um, whoever else you choose to put on it, uh, it's up to this committee. If we're going to worry about it going to council and being changed, then you're right. Why are we a committee? So I think if someone wants to nominate, that's fine. Well, I've got to nominate yourself and the Mayor. Uh, and then two other panel members, perhaps from the community. Uh, I'm easy, but certainly two elected members only. Uh, and whatever the decision they make, you know, let's get on with it. Are you suggesting perhaps that one of the other people should be from this committee? Um, I think so. Um, I mean, that's what we're here for, and this is our role within within the council. Obviously, we're here to make decisions. Uh, it'll be interesting to see whether it does go to that other place, but um, no, I, I think it should come from here. I don't, I don't believe it needs to go. This, this committee's got delegation to sort these matters out. I'm getting really worried that their literal interpretation by staff is that these things have to go back to council. Yeah. This committee, my understanding is this recommendation would be approved. We, we can approve the scope of the Australia Day celebration and we can approve the Australia Day awards panel. That's not, I'm not saying that because I want to see that council is not involved, but that's the whole point of us being here. If we're going to start every one of these recommendations going to council, there's no point in having this committee. Through the chair, if I may, there's no... Um, there was no indication, I believe, in this report that it's going to council. This is has always been a decision of the committee in terms of who is on the selection panel. In the recommendation, we've just included the sentence in there just to remind us that we need to make the decision today. And there's four blank kind of spots for you to choose that in your when you move your motion today. So this is a decision of the committee. It's um. I Councillor Ryan, you've, you've given two people. Do you want to add the other two to it and make the uh, resolution?
Yeah, I was um, going to suggest something similar, but there's only four people on this committee. That means that the um, member, um, Lily, wouldn't be on that committee, is that right? The way this is adding up. Uh, through the chair, I could um, be there as a, your executive officer to help facilitate the so process. So you're separate yeah. to... So yeah, I was trying separate, to fathom yeah. that out. <laughs> yeah, just, uh, yeah, to facilitate yeah. the process. In previous years, I have been a... This role has been part of the selection panel, you know, mm. undertaking the process. There's no reason that this role, you know, needs to be, but mm. I can be there to help facilitate and support um, the panel. Um, normally, we would, you know, in, re in recent years, we've had the presiding member on the panel and the mayor um, and also a community representative. The the number of people there, it's just a number that we've had at this mm. point in time, so it is up to you. My question, Lily, um, if you wouldn't mind, probably your expertise, would uh, how would that work if um, a member of those had been um, put up? Like, if a lion or a rotary member is put up, um, so, yeah, because um, I'd like to suggest um, the mayor, the president, presiding member, I mean, um, the Lions and uh, the Rotary Club. Um, I was going to recommend myself, but I see Councillor Ryan's got his name up there. It's up there. Um, I know, but... I, so... No, it's, but that makes five instead of, um, yeah. I think that that more um, fairly demonstrates what we want. So yeah, just so um, if there's a, uh, what happens when somebody from Rotary is put up or Lions is put up, uh, are they excused from um, that particular part? How does that work? I'm just interested to know. And will any of these people, they'll still be able to talk at civics, won't they? Yeah. Yeah, I just want to make sure it doesn't work like council. Um, perhaps I can answer that for you, Councillor Halls. In previous years, when someone from the Lions or the Rope Tree has been put up for a position, um, uh, like a nomination, the uh, person who is representing the lines or the rope tree cannot be on the panel. Oh, wow. So, and I, my own personal view is that we don't have lines and rope tree; we just have one, and perhaps an elected member. Um, I'm just aware of the fact that uh, it needs to be fairly, fairly confidential, and uh, I think just one from a service club is enough. In that case, then I, I would be putting up myself and Erin. As the elected as member. As the elected member and yes. Aaron, Aaron as the, the road tree. Um, through the chair, I guess there's an opportunity if anyone else is interested to be a representative and we could, um, and if there's more than the allotted places, we could look at kind of a, little, a ballot to decide. I think one of the issues here is that we are not a complete um, committee at the moment, so we can't hear from the other members that are not here. And unfortunately, that's um, something that is a problem. Um, ha we have got a quorum to vote on this, haven't we? So... Um, yeah. It needs to be decided today, Councillor Hall. Yep. Okay. I think Beryl will... Are you moving that way? No. Beryl wants to have a word before I move it. Yeah. Um, is there a reason why one person from O2 and one person from Lyons can't be on that committee to make it five? Well, the, the idea is not to overload the committee, but Beryl, as we just mentioned before, that if, um, say for example, you came on, on that, the same as uh, um, 
Erin came on it and someone from your Lions Club was nominated as someone from Rotary, you can't participate on the panel. So it's better if, if you don't actually have too many service clubs on there because if someone from their club is nominated, then they can't be on the panel. Well, there's a, because of the restrictions on the people that can apply for an Australia Day Award, that doesn't come into it, does it? I wrote it, my understanding is that Lions um, could be on the committee but couldn't enter for an award, is that right? That's correct, but it would be biased if they were on the judging panel and someone from Lyons was uh, nominated. It would definitely be biased. Yes. Councillor Halls, are you moving that way? Because it's yes. I'm well aware of the time. Yes, uh, I understand, uh, Councillor. Uh, yes, I'll move what uh, the... Um, We'll try it at that and see how it goes. I'll move that motion as it is. Well, as I said, I am concerned with having Rotary and Lions, that if someone yeah. from those those committees is nominated, then that knocks those people off the uh, judging. But at that point, they don't have to be replaced if we've got five. Do, is that the case? If there's five up there and one of them, are, a Rotarian or a Lions, is nominated, then that just knocks them off. We don't need to fill the spot. Um, through the chair, you've got enough people there to continue to judge? Yeah. If that's what you decide? That's, that's what I thought. So I, I'm happy for that. Um, so if a Rotary or Alliance person applies, uh, is, is put up by anybody, regardless of whether it's Alliance, uh, they might be put up by a community, um, that just knocks them off and they we're not replacing them. I, I move the motion as it stands. Thank you. So we have a, a, a committee resolution. Uh, Councillor Halls is moving it. Would somebody like to uh, second that, please? Thank you, Mayor Doherty. Is there any further discussion? There being none, I'll put that resolution moved by Councillor Halls, seconded Mayor Doherty. All in favour? Against? Uh, that's carried. That's carried, thank you. Chloe, have you got anything further to add on Australia Day? No, Madam Chair. Thank you for that very comprehensive report. Uh, we'll now move on to the committee work plan, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so the community work plan has been updated, so the committee work plan has been updated um, with regards to obviously the Christmas program, which um, we've given an update of today. Um, and then we've got um, the next meeting for um, the 2nd of December, we've got the, an update for our Christmas program um, and then an update on the event management and planning for Australia Day 2021. Thank you for that. Any discussion on the committee work plan? No, there being none, we have no informal actions, no confidential matters. So I close the meeting at 20 past five. I thank you all very much for your attendance. That's one of our longest meetings so, <laughs> as tea time. <laughs> so thank you very much and thank you for anybody watching. Responsible pet ownership is about looking after your best mate. By law, all dogs must be registered when they reach three months of age or within 14 days of being on a new property or if they have changed ownership. Registering your dog means they are given every opportunity to be returned to you if they ever get lost.